And you've been very outspoken about 9-11, saying it's an inside job. Mm. Is that the same patterns through time as well, where they create these catastrophes to then give the green light to go and kill innocent people? Literally, yeah. And, and you know, that, that's, that begs another little chapter of my life quickly, is that um, just quickly on the whole Satan. Satan requires, uh, at the highest level, Satan wants uh, sacrifice of, of children. And in particular, there's plenty of evidence to show this. The most prized is Christian babies. Christian baby boys, even Madeline McCann, she was sold by her parents into Podesta, all of this, all intertwines. Anyway, getting back to 9-11, I, in my former life, so I came out of the Marines, I was trying to figure out what am I going to do, I looked at business, I looked at this, and I had a girlfriend, she got me a scuba certification in San Diego. And I made friends with the uh, instructor who taught me to scuba dive. And, you know, he told me about how he became an instructor and blah, blah, blah. And I realized, like, hey, that's an option. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, let me do that. So I decided to become a, a scuba diving instructor. And, uh, and I had a, a girlfriend uh, who ended up being with me for several years, who was Irish, uh, also my second cousin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we ended up moving. She came out from London to uh, first California, and then we moved to Hawaii, where I became a dive instructor. In that time, I got all these tattoos. My, my reasoning for these tattoos was, you're not going to confuse me with your average white boy. No. So there you go. I, and by the way, 30 years ago, this shit, 30 years, I looked like a proper drug dealer convict back then, boy. Now it got all damn popular. Everybody's got a freaking tattoo, you know? It's almost like, shit, now I'm, let me take them off now. <laughs> like, no, I like my tattoos. But anyway, the bottom line is I was, I separated myself. And, and every single job that I'd ever applied for before I got these tattoos, I can honestly say every single job I got it. I've always had a silver tongue. I'm a hard worker. I always got the job. After I got these tattoos, which I also knew this was going to happen, I knew it would force me to create my own path. So I became a dive instructor. I went to try to get a job. Nobody would hire me. They didn't want to hire me. In that industry, in that scuba diving industry, which we're talking generally well-to-do people on holiday in Hawaii or wherever they are, right? They don't want to see fucking the drug dealer convict kitten guy. You know, they don't, they don't want to see me. So nobody would hire me. So I forced me to make, I, I created my own dive business and I had this dive business. I built it from the ground up. My mom ended up coming in and being my partner because I couldn't handle all the business. She took an early retirement. That business, DP Ecology, there's videos uh, of, of this. I, I saved uh, 46 green sea turtles I pulled out of the water myself in the space of just over two years that were wrapped in fishing line. I saved their lives. 13 had to have their fins amputated because it was too late, but we were able to amputate it in a controlled environment. They did that, and then we were released it a month later after being re rehabilitated, and I saw several of those turtles, you know, months or even a year later, so they were still living. So, I mean, I was incredibly blessed saving turtles. I was doing ghost net recoveries, which is nets that have been left abandoned, and they sit down there, and they just keep killing. I did a couple of those at 200 feet deep. I was a technical diver. I was a cave diver. I could mix gases. I had the best dive shop and, and uh, fill station in the entire state of Hawaii. And my business ended up being rated the number one dive operation in the entire state of Hawaii, even though the diving on my island was the worst. You know, I was on Oahu, which is the main island. Uh, Maui, Kauai, the big island, all better diving, Lanai. In that time, I'm living on the beach, Coral Sand Beach, once again, I'm living on the beach. I'm driving an Acura Legend, a really nice car. Um, I have two boats. I'm doing what I love. I'm making money. I'm getting international attention. BBC did a story about me. Animal Planet did a story about me. French media. I did over 100 local news stories of me rescuing turtles on video. And I was in my house and I happened to have an Iranian dude. I've always needed people who were fucking intelligent and the Yanks are too stupid. So I met this Iranian guy and I said, hey, go on, you can come live with me for a while. And he says, so we were there and we got this phone call on 9-11. Hawaii's behind, right? So it was like three in the morning or something. We get this call like, turn on the news, turn on the news. And so I turn on the news and there we are. We're watching 9-11. 
And me and him looked at each other. I mean, I was I started off like this is not what we're being told, and I knew this was like World War Three, or it was going to be like fucking huge. The beginning of the war on terror, weapons of mass destruction, Iraq. What they have to do with this? Sorry, uh, was about to happen. I had everything. I had a life that anybody would kill for. But I was already confronting the cops on the constitutional levels of the tickets and things. So. That's a whole another story, but I literally have court transcripts of me saying, what form of law are you practicing here? And calling out the judge and saying he's committing treason for not honoring his oath. And so I literally have that. So I've been fighting this since my 20s. On 9-11, when that happened, when I was watching it, I realized, like, fuck me, man. I have to get out of Dodge. And I told my mom within a day or two, I said, mom. I can't stay here. I knew I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I knew it was some sort of false flag, and I was right. And within a year, I was on CNN live. There's footage. You can watch my CNN interview. I said live on CNN because it was live. On the Hard Talk interview that I did in 2003, I didn't say it because that's recorded like this. But on a live interview, now I can say it, I said that the United States government was either directly involved or complicit with 9-11. I don't know of anybody who said that at that nobody nobody if you can find anybody who said it on international news media before me i'll be shocked i've never seen it i'm the first guy so i was calling out 9 11. i left my paradise life and i saw political asylum in holland and i lived in a refugee camp with a bunch of africans in a place called Stadskanal. they got me as far away from amsterdam and den haag and shit they <laughs> yes and way the fuck up there <laughs> <laughs> and I proved that I was a legitimate asylum seeker. I was the only asylum seeker from America in Europe. I proved. They tried to get me out, but I proved it with a court transcript showing that they had issued an $11,000 bench warrant for my arrest um, for a minor traffic violation, of which I showed that I was in the court, but the judge acted like I wasn't in the court. I had the transcript to prove it. Explain that. And $11,000 back then? In 2001, an $11,000 bench warrant, you'd give that for somebody who was charged with like armed burglary who didn't appear in court. That's like, you don't give an $11,000 bench warrant for somebody who's accused of going 10 miles over the speed limit. <laughs> but they did for me. A lot of the Americans still think it was a terror attack. But if you look at one of the women was given an interview and says the towers have fallen, the towers were still... Yeah, building seven. Well, yeah. They were still there. And... Um, the jet fuel can't burn the, the beams and then it looks like it was detonated and then apparently everything was destroyed but the passports of the hijackers was... I'm an expert. I can I can lay this out. Yeah, in, let's go. In, in like, this is absolute truth. It, like, like you said at the beginning, you need to get to the source. You need to get to the root. That's where you, First off, whenever you do a homicide investigation or any investigator, who stands to gain is the first question. It's always the first question. So we have to go before 9-11 back to what was known as the Project for a New American Century or the Neocons. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Remember the Neocons? Neocon is a euphemism for Jews, basically. Zionist Jews. They're all Wolfowitz and all of them. They're, they're like all Jews except for one. They had a token Arab in there. Um, the Project for a New American Century wrote a paper in 2000, so this Jewish paper, called Rebuilding America's Defenses. In that document, it said that with the fall of the Soviet Union, basically 10 years earlier, with the fall of the Soviet Union, that the world had changed and that the two superpowers were now one. That the one superpower, America, needed to take advantage of this and become the world police. Like, you know... The, the, the cop of the world, the, the ruler of the world, right? Because we're the good guys, right? This is the way they, they were, right? We're the good guys, obviously. You know, we beat communism now. We're the good guys. We need to take control. And this is rebuilding America's defenses. And they said, in order to do that, we would have to fight wars of aggression to secure the most important energy and resource reserves of the world. And that would allow us to control through the control of the resources like oil and minerals, Afghanistan and all these rich areas of deposits. We would then be able to achieve this goal of global spectrum dominance. 
In order to achieve this, we would have to fight these wars of aggression. There would be a lot of casualties, and the American people did not have the stomach for that. And in this document, very famously, oh, for those of us who actually study history, they said the American people would never accept such an agenda. What was be needed in order to affect this policy of global spectrum dominance would be a, quote, new Pearl Harbor type event. This is their exact word. So that's 2000, right? So here's what we want to do. We want to go take over the entire world based on the fall of the Soviet Union, secure all the minerals in Afghanistan, the oil in Iraq, and all the other key reserves. We got Saudi Arabia. Gold, poppy fields. Poppy all of it, right? All of it. And, but the American people are too stupid to realize this real great thing that we should be doing to like be the world police. And so they won't accept it, but a new Pearl Harbor could help uh, make that happen. So that's a year before 9-11. Let's look at 9-11. Before, ni before 2000, 1993. So those towers were built with asbestos. Have you heard of asbestos? Mm -hmm. I think everybody's heard of asbestos, right? Asbestos, if it's, you know what? If this building had asbestos in it, you know what would have to happen? You'd all be, you'd have to get out. You wouldn't be able to be. They can't build buildings with asbestos, right? Well, by the 90s, it became clear that the asbestos in the trade towers, the twin towers, was killing people because they were getting cancers. Of course, all the businesses and the moneyed interest in those buildings did their best to hide it as they do. But eventually, uh, some suits had come through and it became clear that the precedent had been set. These buildings had asbestos. The asbestos was getting into the lungs of people. They were developing cancers directly related to the asbestos in the buildings. That was a known fact. Now, the Port Authority of New York, which is Jew-controlled. <laughs> Manhattan is controlled by the Jews. I'm sorry. They, all the big real estate, pretty much. Oh, yeah, that's anti semitic Oh, it's true, though. Wait. Are you allowed to say true anti semitic Oh, for fuck's sake. So the Port Authority, who owned the Twin Towers wanted to get out from it they wanted to sell it but nobody would buy it so they tried to release their lawful ownership of it and they had gone through a 10-year period of lawsuits or a, a suit a case a legal case to get out from having the liability of these buildings right they tried to farm it off they couldn't do it and they lost the final case, like where they're liable now. So now the cost to remove the asbestos from the Twin Towers was in the billions, literally. So these buildings were actually already half empty come 2000, 2001. They were already bare sterns, I think, or I forget, and one of those. They had already moved out because one a case had come through and, and like it was the precedent. Like like all the companies that are leasing in that building are now going to be sued from anyone who gets any cancer, which is going to happen because there's a lot of long term employees in there. So the buildings again, everything I'm saying here, I can back up. I will destroy anybody who wants to debate me on this. I'll make them look stupid. I know this subject. I made a documentary about it. It's seriously shadow banned and censored, you know, but it's, I have it. Anyway, these buildings were worthless. The, the cost of removing the asbestos was worth far more than the actual buildings themselves. The Port Authority had lost its longstanding attempt to get out from under the buildings. And we now reach 2001, July, and lo and behold, Two Jewish billionaires buy these buildings. Most don't know. I don't know any of this. Frank Lowy, Lucky Larry Silverstein. Two Jewish billionaires. So these are Jewish billionaires. Usually businessmen are kind of savvy about things. Usually um, if you're looking at a business deal where the Port Authority is trying to get rid of buildings that are full of asbestos because the liability that they would incur from trying to remove that stuff is in the billions. 
and they haven't been able to get rid of it. They've tried a lawsuit. They tried a suit to get out. They can't do it. And now that these buildings are true, truly nothing but billions of debt and liability, two Jewish billionaires, Frank Lowy and Larry Silverstein, connected directly to Mossad. What is the motto of Mossad? By way of deception, thou shalt do war. These two Jewish billionaires connected directly to the power structure within Israel and Mossad take control of the buildings. Guess what that means? Mossad had full access to the buildings for two months previous, previous to 9-11, 2001. Because they just bought the buildings. Now, in that time that they bought the buildings, they doubled the insurance on the buildings. They increased the insurance. So they increased their policy on these worthless buildings. Okay, that's interesting. So these two Jewish billionaires just transferred billions of liability into their hands and increased the insurance. On the day, this is fairly well known, but again, people who don't know and don't care about truth and happy fucking go along with their, whatever they're doing in their lives, this, there's put options uh, that went that were predicting the fall of American Airlines stock that we know are connected to the CIA. Uh, and we saw on that day, everybody was betting on the stock going down. Kind of worked out well there, because when the buildings got hit by planes, the stock of the airline companies went down, and so they made a killing. Larry Silverstein and Frank Lowy, the two Jewish billionaires who had control of these buildings, which meant the whole control of the security of the buildings was in the Jewish billionaires' hands, uh, Mossad, we have actual video proof evidence uh, that shows Mossad operatives in the buildings with blasting caps. So they were actually planting some explosives in the buildings, but that's not how they brought the buildings down. This is all fact. On 9-11, we saw two aluminum cans uh, run into these steel frame buildings with girders that wouldn't even budge from that aluminum can known as a plane. Um, and, and there's so many other things to throw us into smoke and mirrors, but the bottom line is, there's the, if we just accept planes, there's a lot of stuff to show that it's holograms, but that just makes it harder. to Let's just accept that they're fucking planes, all right? So these planes, these aluminum cans, hit buildings that are steel framed, and uh, we see the buildings on fire. All right, first first building gets hit, and then the second one. Now, I'm up, too, in Hawaii. We were all watching this, were we not? <laughs> we were all watching this, like the moon landing that didn't happen. Um, in fact, when I was being born, they were watching it. In the, I swear to God, I, my mom was in labor 17 hours. They were watching the fake moon landing while I was being born in the fucking delivery room. So anyway, on 9-11, these buildings get hit, and and then we saw we saw the buildings come down. We saw the buildings come down. Now, first off, I know Richard Gage, uh, the head of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. I also was friends with a dear, lovely man, the chief fire investigator, Rudy Dent, who lost 444 of his brothers. Um, I know both of these men. I had a beautiful, I have a beautiful relationship with uh, Richard Gage, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. They all came out and said there was no way that uh, an aluminum can with jet fuel is going to burn uh, the support beams and bring those buildings down. That is not engineering possible at all, period. Um, Rudy Dent, the chief fire investigator who reported on famously, he paid as well. He died from all the smoke that they inhaled. That's toxic asbestos and all sorts of shit they inhaled. He, he said clearly, I heard the explosions in the buildings. Um, and he and they he talked he exposed building seven as well like you know <laughs> that fucking thing that was a conventional demolition that one that one clearly that one was but if we look at the 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 falling of the twin towers they turned to dust they literally turned to dust now that technology which was little known then slightly more known now is called directed energy in fact when i was in maui recently they used directed energy to create fires with such intensity that we saw the engine blocks and rims of, of cars melted 
A wildfire does not do that. Absolutely not. But you know what can melt steel? Directed energy. So these buildings that two Jewish billionaires that were full of asbestos that would have, if you brought it down with conventional demolition, you would have had to remove all of the asbestos, which would have cost billions. Well, it worked out quite well for Frank Lowy and Larry Silverstein. By the way, Larry Silverstein used to eat every single morning, every single workday. He went on the windows of the world, the North Tower, every day, except for that day. Apparently he had his, uh, uh, an optometrist appointment that day. He missed that day. Do you know that Jews who worked in the building received a text message saying not to go to work? No Jews died there. Fact. Oh, it's anti-Semitic. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, they did. Odigo gave him, gave him a text message saying, don't, you're calling sick. <laughs> Lucky Larry had an optometrist appointment, so he wasn't there either. But a bunch of goy died that day. I also know Rich, uh, Rodriguez, who was the man who had the key that saved a bunch of people's lives. Uh, he was He's a friend of mine too. But bottom line is this, those worthless asbestos laden buildings that were a liability to the tune of billions that were now purchased by Jewish billionaires Lowy and Silverstein with doubled insurance policies now fell to dust oh that's disposable disposal problem done free too apparently so you don't have to dispose of nothing now your buildings are gone they've turned to dust no less all based on what tin can I'm sorry planes hitting fucking steel and a fire and they fall into their own footprint. And do you know, again, people don't know this. They say they carted away all the steel to China. Bullshit. They were gone. There were holes in the ground with molten steel. This is what Rudy Dent said. This is what the firemen said. They all said this. Again, none of this is explained by a conventional demolition. They did set off some charges. We see the squibs coming out. They did. But that's all diversion. That's just to get us all fighting. Oh, it was this, it was this. Who did it? Is it debatable whether two Jewish billionaires bought these worthless asbestos-laden buildings that transferred billions in debt to them or liability to them? That's not debatable. That is not debatable. That's not a very good business decision, but boy, they did get real lucky, didn't they? And guess who they blamed it on? Who'd they blame 9-11? 19 dudes with fucking box cutters who hijacked planes that brought down two buildings brought down three buildings with two planes. They say debris from one of the towers hit a corner of the building seven and that that's what brought it down into its own footprint. This is a fucking joke. Nobody with any kind of critical thinking would buy this and it's proof positive. I've said this is the litmus test. Not only that it's an inside job, you idiots, but that it was an inside job based on the very, very well-declared principle of by way of deception thou shalt do war, Mossad. Who makes money from war? I said it earlier. The bankers. Who are the bankers? Jews. Who is Mossad? Jews. Who is fucking exterminating my people in Gaza right now? The Jewish state of Israel. Who considers us to be Goyim? The Jews. And the good ones? God bless them. Ilian Pape. The ethnic cleansing of Palestine. God bless you, Ilian. Stanley Kubrick, a Jew. I love him. <laughs> I do. And the Jews who fought for Adolf Hitler. The 150,000 Jews that fought faithfully, including in the SS. God bless you. Gilad Atzman, a friend of mine, a, a saxophonist, world class, who, who lived here and got run out of this town because he also knows about his own people. This group of people runs the world. They carried out 9-11, they blamed it on Muslims, Muslims had nothing to do with it, and then we went and invaded Iraq, which had nothing to do with it. Nothing. Nothing. But you know there's something called the Greater Israel Project, and guess what target number one of the Greater Israel Project is? Iraq, which had nothing to do with 9-11. And there was no Al-Qaeda in Iraq under Saddam, by the way. Now we got ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al... What? By way of deception, thou shalt do war? ISIS. What does that really stand for? Israeli Secret Intelligence Services. How many times has ISIS or Al-Qaeda attacked Israel? Zero. 
I'm sorry. Uh, this doesn't work for me. And you can take your fucking Holocaust six million gas chamber shit and shove it up your fucking ass. It's a lie. What do you think hit the towers? What do you think hit the towers? The twin towers? The twin towers? The, listen. Hope, some people say it was missiles, or some people say it was uh, missiles with wings on it. Um, some people obviously say it's airplanes because then you've got the hijackers, um, the Bin Laden videos. I know the Bin Ladens were flew out of America. I think they owned a big percentage or a small percentage of America, if I'm correct, like 6% or 8% Bin Laden's family. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, no, they were all flown out. And then uh, the only people arrested on the day, I forgot that. The only people arrested on the day were Israelis. The dancing Israelis. You ever hear of them? No. Yeah. So there was a woman. Everybody's watching, obviously. <laughs> you know, if you're living in, in proximity and you can see the Twin Towers, obviously you're watching. <laughs> How are you not going to watch this? So one person, a lady who's famously interviewed, they probably killed her. I don't know what happened to her, but either way, she, she called the police because she saw a group of men with binoculars filming and celebrating, which didn't make sense. You know, like why would somebody, so she called the police. She thought this was suspicious. These are what's known as the dancing Israelis. I believe there was four of them, three or four. And they later were, they were arrested, but they were then released and quietly deported. But they weren't the only Israelis arrested that day. They then did an interview in Tel Aviv. It's on, people can go look, Google it. I'll turn, it's still there. And they said on live television in Tel Aviv, Israel, that they were sent to film the event. That's what they were, and that they are Mossad. They pose as like art students. This is part of their MO. So they're art students. They're actually Mossad. They infiltrate. So anyway, they said on record, this is not my opinion. This is what they said. They were, they were, they had foreknowledge and they were sent there to film the event. And that's why they were celebrating. Okay. So that's one of them. There was also other Israelis that were arrested. They were in a big truck that had been reported as suspicious. It was pulled over by the police. They inspected the vehicle, which was heading towards the George Washington Bridge. And lo and behold, it was full of explosives. And guess who the driver and the occupants of that vehicle were? Israelis? Yes, they were Israelis. They were also arrested. They were questioned and they failed lie detector tests. But we had a Jewish uh, secretary of defense. Uh, oh, my God. What's his name? Oh, my God. It was a Jew in the executive branch who quietly deported the Israelis with explosives, the Israelis who were caught dancing, and failed lie detector tests. A Jew in our government sent them home nice and quiet like. Fox News actually did a story. Funny enough, Fox News. They did a really great story about this. And it only got told once. And they shut it down. But that is out there. The only people, and it exposed not only these ones that were arrested, but the biggest spy ring in U.S. history, Israelis. This was on Fox. They had proof. Like <laughs> This wasn't their opinion. These are all facts. Is that anti-Semitic? Oh, yeah, the truth is anti-Semitic. The truth is truly anti-Semitic. You're not allowed to say these things. And only a crazy bastard like me will say these types of things. But it's true. And as I said earlier, truth is God and God is truth. What about Bin Laden? Who was doing the videos in a so-called cave? Obviously, we've seen people now with the orange jumpsuits pretending to be beheaded. We've got the green screen as if they're in the desert and it causes chaos and fear. But what about the Bin Laden thing um, with the videos and he was involved? And yeah. what was that? How was that? What's the truth behind that? It's um, the same thing as the... Uh, the uh the the 19 hijackers they're cia assets and they get paid they in this case remember uh oswald the one who supposedly killed kennedy what did he say before he got shot by a jew <laughs> in the gut and didn't get to testify <laughs> i'm a patsy he said he was a patsy 
he was a patsy. There's no way from the angle. I mean, anybody who does any analysis of the assassination of JFK, there's no way that Oswald could have done that. No way. Absolutely not. There's multiple shots anyway. So anyway, um, these idiots, they get paid by the CIA to like fly here, fly there, stay here. Muhammad Atta, the chief, uh, you know, uh, hijacker, Muhammad Atta, was hanging out in Florida at flight school where even the flight school instructor said those guys couldn't even fly a Cessna, literally, was going out with a stripper and snorting cocaine. Does that sound like somebody who's on a jihad? No, it sounds like a fucking patsy, an idiot who works for the CIA, who gets money to go snort coke, have sex with strippers, and be on this plane at this time and go over here and stay in that hotel and leave your passport here. <laughs> it is ridiculous, man. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it just shows, like, uh, how fucking stupid are we seriously going to get? I mean, this this has been happening over and over. So, you know, the 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 planes... Look, the Pentagon, I know enough about that, too. All of the tapes surrounding the Pentagon, <laughs> they were all taken away. And apparently, and they even acknowledge in the official bullshit 9-11 commission report, which is just beyond a, a fucking snow job. It's ridiculous. Um, oh, the, the tapes were lost. <laughs> right. And that hole that that plane was supposed to... <laughs> <laughs> you are truly having a laugh, mate. You're having a laugh, mate, surely. Right? That's a good one, mate. I like that one. There was no fucking plane there. <clears throat> that was a missile for sure. Um, if we're going to get into what hit the buildings, nothing hit the third building. <laughs> that was clearly a controlled demolition. Again, Rudy Dent, chief fire investigator on the day, he heard all of the explosions, as did many others. That's not debatable. It's been thoroughly reported, although not repeated. And people to this day, including all the politicians, I don't know any politician who would suggest that anything other than these 19 hijackers, chief among them, Atus, Norton Coke, fucking strippers, uh, were on a jihad and overpowered the entire might of the military uh, industrial complex and took out three buildings with two planes uh, with box cutters and uh, their passports conveniently. Oh my God, dude, you are having a laugh. It's two Jewish billionaires with Mossad that blamed it on Muslims so that we could carry out the global spectrum dominance agenda laid out by the Project for a New American Century. And it's all there. How do you think the Americans would react if they had all this information, that innocent people were jumping up the building and dying all through this and then invade in other countries because you think it's the right thing to do because your country's in threat? How do you think the Americans would stand if they knew? There's a man named Alan Sobrowski. Uh, he is a professor at the Army War College at uh, West Point. He is top level, security level, um, uh, U.S. military. Um, his credentials are undeniable. Um, you can look online and you could find Alan Sobrowski. Um, God bless you, Alan. Uh, he, he literally has said on record 100% what I'm saying, Israel did this and he's talked to like Pentagon officials and, and like, if you want to destroy your political career, then you will open your mouth about this. If you want to destroy your political career, then you'll say the word genocide, even though it's bloody obvious. If you want to destroy, uh, your access to money then, you know, you, you go ahead and speak like I'm speaking right now. Um, <clears throat> Alan Sobrowski said, when the American people, to answer your question, when they find out, they're going to they're gonna be coming for, for the Jews' blood. They're going to fucking destroy Israel. Question is, are they ever going to figure it out?